Hi everyone, welcome back into the classroom. Well, I promised you we were going to do a bunch of different lessons, and so we're going to start out here with the rows, okay? We have the seascape and stuff like that. We'll be posting all of those within the next week. I also have a portrait coming, so there's a lot coming. But let's go down and let me show you, uh, there's a bunch of different ways I teach beginners. One is I have freehand beginning where you learn to draw. I don't always recommend, I mean, I know as an artist how important drawing is. I break learning how to paint into three different things. I break it into the drawing, I break it into the color, and I break it into the technique. And I teach, and, and I teach my students those three areas, and sometimes those three areas individually, so that if something is wrong with your drawing, it won't be affecting your color, your use of seeing color. And so, as I learned, we when I started to learn, first I started to learn without patterns or anything like that. And then we started to use patterns, and it helped me focus on color and understanding those colors. And then, and then I slowly moved away from that to freehand painting. So, all the videos that you see me paint on the channel, I haven't showed you this, which is uh, what I usually do with beginners. If you're a brand new spanking beginner, drawing is something that will come and something that you must study, but let's study color and the actual painting technique today, and then we'll learn on drawing and stuff later on, okay? So what I do is I find myself a, a, a photo that's, you know, free to use. It doesn't have any copyright entanglements or anything like that. And then I take what is called 3 mil mylar or 3 mil acetate. And I take this acetate and I lay it over the rows that I want to paint. And using a permanent marker pen, I take the lines, the major lines off it. Now I try to find a rose that is not too complicated in the center. Because remember, we're learning how to paint the rose, at, you know, and we don't want to have something that's too complicated. And there are, you know, are there beginning roses? Yes, there's some that you simplify it all down. I show that in freehanding them. But when you're going to draw something or when you're going to take the pattern like this, you can use a rose that is just a little bit more complicated. I'll talk more about that as we get going. Uh, but you don't want to get it too complicated, not too many petals. But you can find a photo and you take it off. See, now that gives you the line. Now what I do here, this is an 11 by 14 board. This is my MDF board, what I like to practice on. A board like this costs me about 50 cents or less because I cut up all kinds of them. And then I base coated this with that color that we have in the line called medium beige. And then I sand it lightly with 180 grit sandpaper. So I just give it one coat. It's not even completely covered with medium beige. And then I sand it with 180 grit sandpaper, which uh, smooths it out a little bit, but still leaves a little bit of tooth to the painting so that it doesn't get too smooth. You don't want anything too too slick. And I don't add sealers or anything like that. I just use paint. Okay. Then I set this down where I want that rose to be, just to practice that rose. And then you use, you can get this at any supply store, you use a transfer paper. It's a dark side here, put that down. And then just go over your lines and transfer your, and what's so great about this when you're learning to design, and I do this with people that are learning to design. See, in the photo, I don't like these two roses in their position. So, and the painting, I'm gonna take that rose right there and move this small rosebud and move it up a little bit closer at a little bit different angle here for this one. We'll talk about all that and stuff later on as you get more into roses. So you'll see that there's the majority, well, I'd say, almost 100% of the time now, I paint roses freehand. But this is how I teach them when I'm teaching students how to see. Take the line off, okay? The rest will come with time. When I teach portraits, I do the same thing. When I teach animal portraits, the same thing. When I teach birds, I teach the same thing. We will, we will break drawing out into a total other lesson as you're a beginner. First, as you're a beginner, you want to get some nice paintings done. And drawing can be very, very difficult. And so there'll be teachers that are, will disagree with me, and I understand that. I really do, because some of my mentors always say, drawing is very important. And it is. It is really important. 
Okay, don't get me wrong. It is not, but I break it up, and this makes the easy, learning easier. Because if we're going along here, and something comes off on your rows, you can, and you don't know, you can always set your pattern right back up on top of it, and look through and see. Oh, it's not a color thing. I need a petal wrong, too big. Okay, so it really helps that way. All right. Color-wise today, this is my standard palette that I'm going to use. This is the Hansa Yellow, Darulite Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, uh, the Naphthol Red Light, Pine Green, Thalo Blue, the Red Violet, Quinacridone Violet, Titanium White. This is the Oloprema, what we do with Oloprema. This is the Derivan's Open Medium right here. And I have a little cap of the Extender Medium right there and extender is a slow drying medium that keeps the paint a little thin so I usually use it uh, you know now that we have this for years I used it all solely as the only product now we have this I use this for thicker areas and this for thinner areas and we'll get into that okay all right let's get into painting a rose and, and breaking it down according to our value scale and what we want to do with values because values are so important in painting of a rose like this, okay? All right, so when we look at this rose, we come in, first thing you gotta do is analyze your light source. Light's coming in this way. This is a wonderful apricot nectar rose, and the light's coming in this way. Darker colors are down here. There's some intensity uh, things that you have going on here. I wanna concentrate on value, which is the lightness and darkness of color first, okay? We'll get more into tonal qualities. We'll paint a pretty rose here. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about the tone, but I want you to concentrate on the light and darkness of the, of the uh, rose that we're gonna paint, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wash in. Now, sometimes, you know, if you're gonna do this, and if you tend to be heavy-handed, this is what I tell my, all my students. Take a pencil, and it, you don't have to worry about this with heritage. Take a pencil and go over your lines to make them darker so that you don't lose them if you once you start to paint over them, okay? So don't be afraid to, uh, you know, to paint over your lines and, uh, you know, get some of this extra, you know, color and stuff like that on there. You can't be afraid of doing that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to take a, a larger brush. This is a three-quarter inch, very soft brush. I'm going to take some extender medium and I'm gonna analyze what is one of the colors that I have here in the rose that I really like. And it's really kind of based off of a Darulite yellow. I'm gonna push in some colors into the rose first and uh, you know, just to get some color going. Now there's many different ways in which techniques that I use to uh, paint a rose. This is just gonna be one of them I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna take some extender medium, with that Darulite yellow big brush, mix it up really well so it's nice and smooth, and we're gonna go right over that center part of the rose where that brighter yellow of that rose is sitting all around in through here, okay? So, and you can just whisper it off. And, you know, sometimes, and this is where I want you to, we wanna pay casual. Sometimes I don't worry about it. I go right out into the background. I'll touch some out into this one as well. It's just imparting a little color, and that's what I like to do. We're going to take a bit of our red, all red. Let's mix up, and I'm keeping the colors thin. That's why I'm using extender. Mix up a little bit of that extender into that. Let's take a little bit of burnt sienna in that as well. And in the rose, you have, and you can see it here under the rose. You see this circle right here. This is the bowl of the rose. Okay. And many times in my rose lessons, we're painting the bottom shadow of the rose. This time this rose is a little bit more opened up, so we're looking into it. So ba but basically you see the bowl of the rose here, and you see all of the dark tones through the center of that bowl of that rose, right? So that's what I want to do. I want to just lightly, lightly with this, not opaquely, just lightly impart a little bit of that red right around through the center part of the rose over onto this bud, it's gonna be right back down in here. Now notice it's it's transparent enough that I can see my, my uh, pattern through the rows, okay? And so everything's good, I know where everything, I know where everything is, I'm not 
I haven't lost it yet because I haven't lost the pattern, okay? All right. That usually happens when you start using white. White's one of the most opaque colors that we have on our palette. When we start doing that, boy, we can start losing a pattern really quick. All right. So let's come in and let's start. So that just starts some color going on into our rose. Now, out through here are our light petals. As a matter of fact, this is one of the lightest petals, you know, that we have. And inside here is some of the darkest colors. So what I usually like to do is put in a, a few strokes of the dark, dark color. I'm going to take a uh, bit of both of my violets, maybe a bit of this red here, and this will be more opaque. On your pattern, you're, on your rose, you'll see this very center here. This is the basically the very front part of the bowl right here, but right into this area. And you can lose, there's an extra little line I put in there. I can lose that. I don't care here. It's, it's there just to help us from getting lost. And many times I would tell my students, just get some dark in there. If you have to go back later on and put your petals back on so you can see them, that's okay. You know, and, and I don't care if, if you've been painting 20 years, but you never painted a rose, do it this way. And if you have to put petals on, put them on. After 30, 40, 50 roses, you're not going to have to do that anymore, hopefully because you're starting to learn how to draw them at the same time. Okay, so then I'll just push off just a little bit to soften it. But that's my nice dark color that's going to be down there in that center of the rose. So basically what I'm doing is putting that dark color right down in there like that, see? Okay? And sometimes, and I like to do this, if the photo doesn't have it, I will do it. I will push some of that dark right down into the shadow side of the rose as well. And so I'll push it right down in through here. Here's that front petal though. I'll keep a little bit lighter there. That one that's going to be right here. So I might leave that one right there a little bit lighter. But I'll push some of that dark right down in here. Okay. Now some of you that have been painting quite a few roses, if you don't want to concentrate so much on the shape of the rose, you can you can let some of the little petals go, you know, let some of it go and start painting it a little more casual too. They both work. Okay, so now I've got the darks in there. And I always put the darks on because darks, because of simultaneous contrast, darks make lights look lighter. Let's drive right back over here. Pinch wipe your brush. Pick up a little bit of both our yellows. We need to make kind of a peachy color for this. Peach is yellow and a little bit of the red, or the uh, cranacridone violet. Though that makes beautiful peach colors. Let's add a little bit of white to this and we'll lighten this up. Needs to be a bit more peach, it's just a bit yellow, so we'll add a touch more of the quinacridone and lighten that up. And just right about in there, that's going to get me those colors that are right there into the rose, which is fine. Now, this one right up here is at least a nine, it's up here about a nine. So I'm going to need a little bit more light. And usually what I do when I do this, let me just take this off to the side so we have lots of room to work with, okay? Usually what I do is I slide off to the side and basically what I start doing is making a value scale here. Let's slide right off over here, adding more and more white till we get right up to our nine where we're supposed to be. If your brush gets too full of paint, just wipe a little bit of it out. It doesn't waste paint. Okay, wiping off the thing. All the paint that I put out here, I put out about 50 cents worth of paint. Okay, and I have enough here to paint maybe 10 roses. So it's, it's not a waste of paint. Get that out of your mind right now. Because if you start worrying about, oh, I'm wasting paint or I'm doing this, you're going to stiffen up and you're not going to do anything right. Okay, this is uh, part of learning is that these are supplies. It's just going to take some paint to do this. Okay, all right. So... I'm going to take this paint here. This is the lightest petal that we see right there. And I'm just going to come out here to the outside of it here and put that on right like that. Just follow the outside here. Now, once you have that on here, you can look and actually see that this is kind of curved coming in. This right here that you see a little shadow that comes out right there. Do you see that? That's actually the vein line, the center vein line of the petal. And every rose petal will have them. See, here's the center vein line here. Here's the center vein line here. Now look at the angles at which they're coming in. So the calyx, or where the stem is of the rose, is down here. 
Here's the center vein line coming in. Okay. Here's the center vein line coming in. Here's this one coming in at that angle. Here's that one coming in at that angle. That is what you look for as the angle at which you stroke in and out for the rows. So I put the light color on here. Now I want to go back, darken down just a little bit here. Let's go back to maybe, a, I always say to my students, oh, never go any more than two. So you want to go a, a little bit darker. So here we're lighter than a seven, we're about an eight. So if I'm here at a nine, now I'd come right alongside here with my eight, right alongside it, right like that. And that puts the shadow in on that petal. Now, I'm going to pinch wipe my brush. And if you don't want to touch your rose, you can just touch a little light like this and pull in lightly, pull in, pull in like this and pull that color in. If you get a little extra color to the outside, just touch that again with your light and take it out. But you start to make some of that movement in and out. If you lose too much of your shadow, just reinforce your shadow again. Now what I like to do is push. I like to wipe still a little bit wet, push with my, with my finger. This is where techniques come in. You'll see me in all of the videos talk about the shear technique, water solvent technique, we have the, of course, the Alla Prima technique, um, and there's different techniques. What I don't want to do is blend. I do not need to blend these two values together because they're so close to begin with, your eye is already doing it. I'm just going to put out a little bit of light and put out a little bit of dark and put out a little bit of movement. That's all. Let's come back in, touch maybe a, a little bit of the extender, or you could use open medium now. And let's put that light right out here. Boom. That's where you see it on that next petal right there, right? Boom. Push that in. Push that in. Where's the vein line on that petal? It's coming right out here like that. What kind of value do you see down here? Well, that shadow is way down in here. It's like a four or five, right? So let's take some yellows. Change up the yellows a little bit. Let's come down over here. Let's add a little bit of our yellows and our quinacridone, and maybe some of this dolulite in that quinacridone. That's real pretty as well. Let's see where we are. Boy, boy howdy, we're right, we're right there with that color, right in there. And that is, yeah, that's right there at about a value five. It'll dry a little darker. So I'm just gonna push that color right in here. Boom, and push that color right in there a little bit. Now, there's a big difference between those two colors that I put on. And that's where we as artists, we go, I'm gonna make a half tone. Well, the half tone is really kind of right up in here. What it is, is if I put on a nine and I put on a five, I've gotta put on a seven, somewhere in the middle. That's the half, does that make sense? Halfway is the seven. So I wanna add some white to this or something to this to get this right up about a seven, which that'll be pretty close. And that's the, what, that's the tone I push here into the center. Now what I like to do is just use my finger to touch them together. That keeps the nice interest of the, of the rose moving that way for me. You could use a brush. You could blend a little bit if you want. What I want to do is ultimately, I'm going to pinch wipe my brush, I want that movement of that petal to come in this way. So I'm just going to touch a little more light right out here. You can even take a stroke don't take too many, take a stroke, pull in to softenly, to set that movement in like that. Wipe your brush, because you pick up dark, and then pull in, wipe your brush, and pull in. Now there's no real secret to itself. See, that's not blending, that's movement. That's adding movement to the pedal. And there's no real secret to blending. I'm not a blender, I'm a tone painter. I put in tones, and then I move the tones together. And some people will say, well, that's blending. No, it's not. One stroke through a color is not blending. It's blending, okay? One stroke through a tone is not blending, okay? And I can do this today. I can do this at any time. It's 103 outside today here, so it's pretty warm, you know, around here, okay? You just have to use enough paint. Now, I can come back. Let's take a little bit of extender and this and this light and let's just re restate some of that light there. See, I can come back. Maybe I like a little bit of that tone and just touch that tone again 
and touch that tone again there and push that in. Give a little bit more more emphasis there to that particular part of the rose there. And that works. Now, back here, this one back here is darker. See, it's darker in value and it's a little grayer. So, how do you make it grayer? Well, on this particular lesson, gray will come from either the background or it could come from its complement, which since we're on the peachy side, green would be pretty close to it. So if I want that one, first let's look at what the value is. Probably pretty close to a 7, between a 7 and an 8. So what I do is I just, I'll just i come right up in here my 7 and my 8, and I like to make a slightly different tone. And I'll lighten it right back up towards my 7 and 8. Now one good thing is you can make a value scale all the way across here and keep yourself straight that way. But I find sometimes if I get too scientific about it, my rose just looks stiff. So I let some of these tones just kind of cross each other. That makes sense? But the big thing here is it can be—it has to be darker. It can be this color right here is fine. Okay, that particular tone is fine. It And I just sneak it in there. And it can sit back there, but if I gray it slightly, it sits even softer. So I just take a tiniest bit of green here and add just a little bit of that to that tone. That will push it back. See how it pushes it back? It's not as bright, right? It's not as bright here. Pushes it back, softens it back, and sets it back there. And again, I can pinch wipe my brush, toss a little tone in there, come back, pick up some of that light, and restate that light petal if I want to get a nice clean edge there of that light one sitting up on top of that dark one. I like to paint back and, uh, you know, center petals like that. I'll paint several times during the painting, each time with a slightly different tone, and that's what gives them so much beauty, you know, in the final painting here. You know, I like um, some of that tone. And you can see on this where it kind of pulls out that way, maybe even slightly greenish here. And I'll push, it's just a touch more violety here. And I'll push that out on that direction there. As long as I have that main direction in, I'll push that in. And see, so you start to get a rose that has a lot of really pretty interest to it, especially in these petals. And you do them a couple times. But we're mixing the tones. We're watching our values. That's the big thing. Watch the values here. The tendency with a lot of young painters is we get too light, too much white. That's what we do, too much white. All right. So let's stay away from that. Let's get a little lighter. Okay, here, not a little lighter, let's get back down into this one that's right here, and let's just push that around, here, boom, push that tone around, find this value first, okay, then you can work on changing colors, we can add a little bit more shadow to it, a little more yellow, a little more shadow, you could add burnt sienna or red to those shadows to change those tones up, let's put a little open medium in this, open medium dries very slow. Let's just walk a little bit of that other shadow across that petal, leaving just a bit of light. So now we have a light source, a light direction to it. So here's my light up here, about a seven, and we can redefine those edges and clean them up and just lift the pressure and walk back like that, okay? Let's put this front edge of that one in here as well, right down like that. So you have that edge coming in. Let's come in here towards that. It always feels better when you start to get some of the bowl onto the rose as well. Now here, you have two bowl petals. And, you know, sometimes I will pluck a bowl petal <laughs> if it gets too difficult to paint, okay? So I don't always follow them. But we're going to get down in here towards our, uh, you know, where is that, those bowl petals down there? Like fives, four fives. Let's get right down in here. And let's add a little open medium to that. We're right down here. I'm right right at a five. And let's just drop some of that right into that whole main petal, right over the two of them, right into that one right there, see? So basically what I've done here is I've turned these two right into just one. And the bow petals will always pull down, so we can start pulling down this way if we get any kind of movement to it. Come back. Let's lighten it up a little bit. How much? Never go more than two. So if I'm down here at a five, I want to look for a seven. There I'm at a seven. 
I'll add the seven in here. And see, that's a nice, that's a nice change there that I could just push a little bit and the two soften together really easy. Okay. But if I come up here and if I put on something that's too light, they don't soften quite as easy. They give you some nice movement, but they don't soften quite as easy. And then you usually have to push down a little darker tone onto it to get that. But that gives you a nice look, what that is. See, value and finding the value, using your scale, finding your photo here, and look what's happening here to our rose. See? Our rose is starting to look like that one. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, you come you start coming closer, okay? And just realize over here are the tone colors. These are your brighter colors, these are the tone colors. These colors here should all have just a tiniest bit of green in it. Let's try it. Let's try this big one here. What's the value of this big one that's over here? It's gonna be down here six or seven. So we're going to be right about into this six or seven edge here. And this time let's add a tiny bit of green to that and gray that down. Let's see what that tone looks like. That's it right there. See, that's that tone. So let's drop some of that grade right up here and boom, boom, boom. And you can pull out, you can draw it in, you can do whatever you want. That's the vein line stroke in there. Let's get it a little darker here. A little bit of red violet, a little bit of burnt sienna, some red. Let's tone it with a bit of green because on the shadow side. I'm going to get this real dark, which is right down there. See, right in there. Let's put a little open medium in that. Let's stroke on the dark. Boom. There's my darkest value right there. Now, a lot of acrylic painters, they get a lot of frustration because they try to blend and blend and blend and blend. And that it just isn't going to work. It's going to dry on you way too fast. So I like to read other little things. There's that beautiful little yellow kind of color coming out of there. I make the tone. I'm going to come up, make the tone with some of those other colors up here from the center part of that. Let's drop some of that in, okay? Let's come right between the two of these with what we call the half tone. Right in between the two of these, but just by touching these two together here, see I make one right in between, and I come in right in there with that and push that right along the side. Now, let's drop down, make one right in between the two here, and push that in, and you can see instantly that blends out, see? That is how you value paint, tone paint, and set that in. And that is what that petal looks like, see? That is what that petal looks like. It's using the values like this. Now, if you're a beginner, you've got to teach your eye to see this, okay? Understanding it's all going to make sense up here. Oh, wow, that's great. But you've got to teach your eye to see what value that is to what value that is. That, I can do it really quick because I've been doing this for so many years. My eyes really tra trained. I don't, I don't need to draw patterns anymore, and I don't need to, you know, do all of the the fine line adjustments. I can see it. That will come. It will come. And there'll be times where you get really frustrated in it. There'll be times where this completely dries up, and you go, "Oh, I can't do it." Don't let. Okay, this is just about completely dry up here. Let me just show you. How do I go back up over there? I just remember. I just know where I am. Sometimes when I first started, I take I take my thing here, even my clear acetate, and I'd make little notes. Okay, value nine, value seven, value seven here. So I knew exactly where I was. And I come back, I'll just come back and, and add some of that. I want to come back and add some more here. I know that's up here towards my nines. I just add that in. I know all I have to do is go back down towards my sevens here, which is what that other one was, push that in. And let's just drop it down. Let's even put a little bit of that gray right there. All of that makes beautiful, here's that petal, just getting more life, more energy, more more stuff. I lost a little bit of its darulite, so I'll just add it back in. Right back in there like that. That's the beauty of, of value painting like this, okay? Let's go over here to this tone, to this one over here, okay? I'm going to loosen this up with just a bit of extender. This is really going to be kind of where that is right there. It's right in there between a six and a seven. That is right 
really where that color is. Slightly grayed, so it's it's your quinacridone, it's your yellows, touch of red, green, and white. Slightly grain it. Do you want to have exactly the same tone? No, change it up a bit, okay? And let's just drop that in there, right up towards that shadow. Let's just drop this whole thing in here first, okay? Let's make it a little, it looks a little bit more yellow-orange up here in the front. So let's just get it up that way here and a little bit of the more yellow orange here a little lighter a little bit more yellow orange here and it's about a value six or so we'll push that in right in there could be have a little touch more of that yellow in there that's better that's closer to that particular color see a little bit of shadow on it right there in the center so we'll drop the value a bit right down in here boom that petal goes on you know that petal is just like almost done see <laughs> once you get these tones out here and you start and I'm I'm watching the value more than anything else the value of these colors but I am watching that tone if it's on the shadow side I'm adding just a touch of that green to to gray it down okay now there's a little bit of a light you can see a little bit of a light edge right there do you want to add that Come back over here. Don't go to this light over here, but just a, a value or so lighter. Add that in. And you can even just tap your brush here, take off some of the action, and just pull down a bit. And just put in some of that movement. Remember, follow that main the vein line movement there. You can restate maybe a bit of this yellow right here and push that in a bit harder on that vein line look there. And you put that beautiful petal in. Okay. Another softer, grayer one here. See it even grayer. That means it's going to have a little bit more green into it. So green it up a bit. Yellow it up a bit. If you're a beginner, you don't see that always right away. Okay. But just know that my rose really here is my yellows. It's peachy color. It's flesh tone color, which is yellows, reds, violets, and tones come from the green. And then I'd add white to make it lighter or darker. Let's start a little bit lighter here. Push that one in right there. Okay. Push that edge in there. Let's darken it down. Green it down because it's gray. Go down here a little darker. Push that grayed tone in right there. And that's, that's almost got that petal. That's almost got that particular petal there. Could go just a touch, touch lighter. And so we'll go up the scale here and just a touch right in there like that. Just pulling in at that angle that way. And now you have that one going in. And so as you come in here into the center, I'm just going to work my lights and my darks. The tones don't change too much, but we'll work lights and darks around the edges here. Sometimes I'll add a little more red so the color changes a, a, you know a bit on it let's just add one right in here and I'm going to trim down my petals somewhat as well in other words you know if there's if you have too many petals or a petal gives you a problem painting it don't paint it get rid of it let's just push the edge right there pull down you don't have to paint every single petal it's still going to be a rose right there's that beautiful quinacridone, darulide, little red, deep color right there into the center, right down here. And I'll just push that. It's like a half tone. So here's my dark, here's my light, here's my half tone. I can pinch wipe my brush, pick up a touch of the light color, and just pull through again. And you can see where those tones soften together through. I like to push with my finger. And it gives you lots of nice, beautiful interest there. Lots of nice, beautiful interest uh, into the uh, into the rows that way, see? And let's just take, when I come up to these other small ones in here, I like to just use the chisel of the brush sometimes. And I just draw the petals. Now, if you've lost completely your petals and you're worrying about it, I'm not worried about it. I just kind of make my own in here now. But if you if you worry about it too much, then 
just come in and put your pattern back on. But you can see I'm coming off my pattern. I know I'm coming off my pattern, but that's okay. I know how to paint the roses. You can see where my, I can set that black and see where my original petals are. Right there like that. That's my original petals. Oh, I'd say pretty good, but I dropped this one down too low. That would be the petal. And that's the beauty of having it on acetate like this. You know, sometimes you get so worried. And, is it a color thing or is it a drawing thing? And you don't know. Uh, and I've watched students just tie themselves into little knots. Uh, now, you know, if you set your black on, you know it's maybe and you know, all your petals are lined up. You know it's not a drawing thing. You now know it's a color thing. So find out what color is, is going off slightly. Okay, and go fix it. So let's just drop that in. So watch your values, watch your values. Down in through here, there's a couple of the, more of those angled petals that are right here. Maybe I only decide to do one. First, let's just soften that out. See the light that I have here. So there's a light and I'm right about down in here. So I'm just gonna come in right in between the two, right up here, and just push that right in here and maybe a little bit darker down towards my darks. Get a bit more of my violets. You can even have a touch of that darker red violet. It's pretty. And drop that in there. And then just push. And see, that's all of a sudden it looks like you blended it. And you didn't. You just touched it with a brush a couple times. And then you can take your chisel, push the color onto your brush like that with the chisel. And you just use the chisel here like this to draw the edge of those petals or just one petal in let's just do one pick up a little medium tone and just come up right by the edge and pull down slightly right by the edge and pull down slightly and we'll just leave that chisel there and then touch your shadow down here by the very bottom you can push a little bit and you've added that petal in there into the center let's add a pinky one right in here so see I'm putting it it's very it's very logical, really, adding these petals and painting this this rose here, painting the, the colors in on this rose. And to me, it as I paint it like this, it's a little more stiff than what I do when I casually paint roses. So after, after a while, you're going to want to really loosen up your style. But when you're learning, this is a great way to learn because you have to get your values correct. Let's put a little light color right there on the edge of that one there, okay? Down in here, let's analyze this this one right here, which is gonna be down around a five or a six. So we're gonna be down here. Let's get a five or a six. A little bit on the red side here. Let's just drop that pedal in, five or a six. Push that a bit, okay? And that's just going to help it. We can put some of those other beautiful colors in there. A little bit more on the yellow side. So we'll add maybe a touch of that. See, I like to add those other little tones in there. We can go back to the chisel here. Pick up the chisel of the brush. And use that to kind of draw the edge of the petal around. Like this. Okay. Make that little V shape in there. If you want to have that little V shape there. Okay, push that in and just pull down a bit. You can pull down with your brush, you can pull down with your, your hand, you can add an extra little dose of white right there. Pull down slightly like that. So you added that petal in there like that. There could be, um, well there is right here, one more big crossing petal. So let's just add a bit more right across the front here like that and I move kind of fast like this and you can take your time and practice your values I'm moving kind of fast like this so I don't play in it um, and you can pause me in between pedal and pedal and just paint along it doesn't make a difference if it dries because you're painting tones you're painting values okay and so slow it down take your time I'm moving a, a little bit fast I know because I don't want to play in this at all and I want to show you, you can paint them actually pretty fast. So I'm going to put a color in here right about those values. It doesn't have to be exactly correct there. And then out will come this light 
and almost as light as that 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 you see up there. So we're going to be right up here, almost as light, and so right up in here. Maybe even a little pink like that's okay. Slide on the chisel and draw that around and down. Let's pick up some more light. Slide on a chisel like a little triangle shape there, falling away. There's the front edge of that petal right there. Okay. Now what you can do, uh, if you want to really clean up your rows, is to come through and look. Okay, I lost some of my shadow back down in here. I lost that in there. Do you see that? So I just go grab a color, my yellow, my quinacridone. That's right about like that, about a six or so. And I just add it right back in. Boom, add that right back in, walk it out a little bit. If this is completely dry, let me show you an acrylic technique. If this is completely dry and you wanna soften that just a little bit, rinse your brush, okay? And with the fusion brush, with just damp, not a whole bunch of water, just damp, pull right through it. And it'll blend those two together like that, see? You're using water as a solvent. That's a solvent blending technique, and I show that on other videos here in, in on the channel. But I can soften it there, too, just a little bit of water. See how quickly the water will do that? It'll soften those colors. So if I want to come in and let's say I want to add a little more Darulite or something like that here into this area of this petal of this rose, make it a little more glowy. As I get out away from that, I might rinse my brush, soften that, and just run through it with just water, and it'll just give it the feeling that those are blending together there. Let's put a little more light. I'm going to put a little extender into this. Let's put a little bit more light right out here onto that one there. And because that gets it a little closer to that one, but we have to soften that out. So I was here. I'm going to slide right back here. Put that tone in your brush. Don't try blending that out. You won't be able to do it. To put a different tone in there that softens up against it, see? Put a different tone right there that softens up against it. Now, go down to where we just were. Touch that. Push that in. And now you've, you've softened it out really easy in there, see? Now you have enough color on there as well that if you did want to do a little bit of blending, you can. Or a little bit of in color incorporation, you can. I like to leave little marks, little life, you know, to my, to my petals. I like a little bit of direction in and out following that vein line. So this one would go in like that. So I like to add little bits of movements to my petals following the, the vein lines and stuff. But that's all up to you. That'll become part of your individual statement of how you paint a rose. Now that's dry. How do I soften that? I just put that on. Let's go back over here, maybe a touch of this, and put on that other little tone and just soften it. Boom, right there like that. So you can see you get that rose real quick that way, right? Really, really quick. Now, let's just go over. So you see going around. Now, little things, like maybe you want to start thinking smaller now. Maybe touching a little more light right out here like this and fixing this petal up. So once I get the main rose blocked in, I then my eye shifts a little smaller and will start working a little more details around. You know, like this little petal actually V's out, so I'll V it out a bit there and, and capture that. Push that color right there. So I'll start to look at some of this stuff. And it's a lot easier, and you have your pattern. If anything starts to bother you, check it on your pattern first. And then check it with your colors. And, you know, you, it's nice having a pattern to know whether or not it's a pattern thing or it's a color thing as you're painting that rose, see? And <clears throat> now into this one that I have here, my reds inside here are a little bit deeper. You just go at them. Start thinning them out. This is where I like to use the extender, where it's thinner. And I'll make a, a brighter color here, but I'll make it really thin. Really, really thin here. And you can start just gently washing over some of the areas here to push that depth of color back in there. Let's go a bit more red, a bit of quinacridone here. 
maybe drop that right down in here. So you can see all of a sudden I'm increasing the intensity of the roses, the color of the roses in there, getting that inside color here at a different step. See, I don't have to do it all at once. I can do it at a different step here. Push that color in there, okay? And then you can start picking up and restating some of those lights down with it here. So we'll restate some of these lights. Let's restate a little bit of the light up here on the top of this one. Maybe a bit more here. Restate this top. If you want to break this, you know, I took one petal. You can break them up into two. But after you get that first NC, you can go back and work again and again and start adding more and more interest or you know, um, streaks or whatever you want to your petals here and start refining them a bit more, more colors. Get a bit of that nice deep reddish tone. Maybe a bit of it shows up right in there. You can, if you want to soften that out real quickly, rinse your brush, take water, take water and just lightly run right through it, see? And it'll soften it right out. You can pull some of it out there like that. It'll make, just picks up that color works really well. It's a, it's a, another different what we call solvent technique. But you can work some of those around, work some of these tones, some of those colors into the rows there. Work some deeper tones right into the center of the rows here. I like the centers of the rows to be nice and dark so I will paint them a couple times slowly getting a little more dark colors into them like that here like that and like that and if I need to I touch my light and I just touch the edge of those petals light again that I was drawing around there if I want to have those and okay, so you build those all up and I like and then you know so we come pretty darn pretty darn close to our, our, our rows here but we could have a little more red and stuff in there I see that Hopefully you see that too. You could have a little bit more red, but before I get going too far here, you know, so I'll just push it in. Just push it in and take a little water here. And soften that in there like that. That's the acrylic part that I really like as well. So I'll push a bit of that in. Before I get going into that there though, I also like to work some colors into my background. And I'm gonna take some pine green and some burnt sienna, some of my favorite colors, and I do a lot of what I call negative painting, pushing down. Now see, this is also gonna make your rose look lighter, and you can see how this all of a sudden starts taking it closer to that other rose, as soon as you get some of these darks here. But this is something that you'll see me do in several lessons, pushing color around like this, the dark color around, and you know, darks and lights and pushing edges and stuff. I like to do that into paintings. It's one of my favorite things. I love burnt sienna and uh, the uh, pine green like this. I like to use them into the paintings like this. I like to push the the, um, the color in with a little bit of, uh, of the extender like this. And then I can wipe it down like this with my... Uh, with my paper towel and take some of it out and get some of these pretty colors, some of this pretty movement and stuff here into the uh, the roses and stuff like this. It's really a lot of fun. And you'll find, you know, and, and as you work through and you start to develop and you start to develop your own looks and stuff, different colors you like to use and put in. And in all my videos, I'll show you all different kinds of ways and talk to you the why behind something because I like everyone to know the why I don't like it's just like okay he just did that I got to do that but why you know I when I was learning I could never find anywhere the why and I had to go study outside actually of painting of the painting industry to learn the why's behind so many different things and I don't like to have to do that now I got a little bit of a blurry edge there and that's okay I'm just going to take a just a touch I don't want to get it too light let's see I'm down in a value of five six so I'm going to be down in here and I'm just going to clean up the edge a bit there 
I, sometimes I let that green just slide into there like that. And then that helps you with what I call the transparency look to the petal. If you want to get a transparency look, you'll see me do that on several other paintings. So I would actually take the color and slide it into the petal like that. Okay, And then I'll come back and edge the petal like that, leaving a little bit of that color in. And that makes it look almost like a transparent little petal there. So there's a lot of little things there I can continue to do to clean up this rose, but let's just quickly go in, analyze the values. What do you see here? The lightest color I see now coming up here is about an 8. So let's go up here. Let's take our yellow, little reds, tiny bit of green because I don't want this, this time I don't want this rose, uh, this rosebud up here. Tiny bit of green. I don't want it to be as powerful as this one. So it's not going to get this 10 or this 8, and it's going to have a tiny bit of green into it. So it's a little bit grayer, so it's not going to be as light. So here comes the light that I see on the photo where I see it. Then I see it dropping down. You can see that center fold line. It pulls down. These are all going to round down right there. Round it down here. And what value do we see? Down there about a four or so. So we'll get that down here. Maybe let's just gray that just a touch so it's not quite as powerful as the uh, the rose up front. Now, here's our thing. We got there and we got there, right? So I'm up here and right here. I'm just going to make one right in between. Sometimes I'll just take some yellow and really change it up. Make one right in between value-wise. So if I'm down here as a four, up here to six or seven, I got to get right about into as a five. That is right as a, it'll dry to a five. It's right about a six, so it dries one down. And I drop that in, and now I got that yellow kind of color there in the center. And I can even just push through a little bit there and make a nice petal. It's all about value. You know, so much of painting is about value. Can touch into the light and pull down a bit to set some final shape and you got a nice looking petal there on the rose. Let's take some of that light maybe right up in here touch that light right up here at the edge because this is leaning to the light a bit. A little bit more yellow comes in next right up against there and that works right up against the edge you can just tap a little light and pull it down to soften it. A little more pink. Well, the bottom of that one looks just a touch, touch more pink. So you see this up here is a little bit more yellow. That's just a touch more pink, maybe a touch of grayness into it. And let's just drop that bottom in right there. You get that value. You get a, Your tone, your grayness can be off. Your value can't. The value is the biggest gun, really, that we have in this type of technique. So you have to get that value pretty darn close. Let's get that a little warmer and orangey back here. That could be just a touch grayer. Right back there. Nice deeper red but we want it a little grayer because it's in the back. So we'll add just a touch of the green here. Nice deep right down in here to the center. Right down in there like that. And if you're ever in doubt, when you use that color someplace out like that, touch a little bit into your main rows and you will always have harmony between the two. I like some of that color. Maybe that color would look really pretty out here again. Down on the base of this. Increase the shadow of this one. That's really kind of pretty. Maybe uh, up underneath the bowl in here onto this one. And so how do you soften that area out? I can go mix a tone or I can jump right to the pure acrylic of it. Clean my brush, take a little water and just drag it right through. Right like that. And soften that out. Put a little heavier right there. Pinch wipe my brush. Let's do a little tone. So you can see the difference between the tone of two. And if you do it just a bit, it changes up really nice. Now I've got a nice little bowl sitting down there of that rose. There, you can make it so many different ways, guys. And, you know, there's 
there's always there's always a way to correct everything. That's what I want you to remember. There's always a way to correct everything in your painting. You know, we can we can do anything here. And I my dog's here is telling me again it's time to go for a ride. Almost. So let's uh take a little bit of this now. Anything you want to recede, you add a little bit of green. You want it to go away, you add a little bit of green. So let's make a softer grade version right back down over here. Maybe a touch of yellow into that. See it's a it's a softer, softer grade. It's grayer than what you see there in the center of that, right? So we'll drop that in, right in there like that. Okay, push that around a bit. That's kind of nice. Let's go a little bit more yellow. I see a little more yellow, a little green, right down here by the base of it there. So you'll see that kind of yellowy green going right down in there in the base. Then it gets lighter out there at the tip, right? So let's just go right back up our scale, back up over here. How light is that? About a seven, maybe an eight. And we'll just drop that in. Now I got quite a bit of difference there. I could take a bit of water and touch into it, or I can just drop right back down into my model darker tones here and just drop a little bit of that in, like that, and just soften it out. I like to do both. So now you got that petal sitting on there. Go back up, touch lighter, just a touch brighter, a little more yellow. Here, the lighter be about a value or so lighter, so maybe just a touch more light than that one. You should see it about a value lighter coming up in front. I'm just going to push on that, set that in. Just a, an edge or so, so just not really very light, just an edge over here. This is what's making the, the center of this rose. Let's drop this edge of this petal down. That one comes down. And a little bit of just a reddish kind of color, just a deeper red right up over here. This is the rounding center of petals that haven't opened up yet. Now we'll put a light right over here that closes it down, that closes down the bowl, here, and uh, so that could be a, a maybe a half a value lighter, so I'll lighten it again, and maybe just pull right down like this, to kind of round it around, it joins in and becomes that petal right there, okay, and you can use that light to help draw around, and clean up and if you want to clean up your rows your shapes and stuff like that you can use that light maybe a bit more mottled red inside here there like that you can even you know I, I sometimes will just take it even though the photo doesn't show it and divide a shape like that so I create like another little petal in there I like doing that you know you will find your ways to do that you know after you do about 50 of these, you know, but it's just learning to see the values of stuff. Learning to see the values. And with this one, we're doing a simple tone that if it's on the shadow side, we add just a touch of green. But practice your values. Value painting is so important, okay? It's so important. Now, okay, so we got that one's pretty close to that one. There's some a few values we could probably tweak a little bit more, but it's pretty darn close to that one. This one's pretty darn close. I could have a little more color into here, okay? And uh, so I'll see that. So that's what the rose is looking for now. And, and that's what I want you to do is practice and practice and practice these right here because that will make your eye be able to see the color. Now, I'm going to step away from my painting here a bit just step away from that and I'm going to add some things in here that I think it's going to make a pretty painting by increasing some of the color because I'm a I'm a big believer that photographs do not make beautiful paintings so I always come back and be an artist and put in a little more spark and color and 
and stuff and, and life and energy to it. So usually that's going to be some of the brighter tones that I'm going to be working in here. And uh, so I do. I tend to brighten them up. I work with my, I always call this the queen, the queen, the main rose. We'll brighten her up a bit, lighten her up, her movements here a bit. And casual. I like to make her look a little more casual with some of the color tones. So I, I just whisper colors and tones around, usually in the movement that I see in the rows. But I might take this one, there's a lot of movement there, I might just break that up a bit here and just take some of this tone right down in there like that. Just make a pretty modeling of the tones, see? And uh, it just gives a little more life. That's what I like to do. And so you can you can do that and practice that afterwards and practice your roses and you know don't worry don't ever worry about wasting paint or boards or this rose didn't work you know you're working on you're working on something on artistic skills that are going to stay with you for the rest of your life there is no wasting anything any time that you paint anything, you learn from it. You see, even if, you know, I see so many people get frustrated and they'll throw it away and they're just like, ah. And it's like, I never do that. I'll sit back down and I'll sit with a cup of coffee the next morning and I'll look at it and, and analyze where I went off, where I went wrong. And we're all going to go wrong. You're all going to go off. And where you learn the most is if you keep it, if you sit down and you analyze it the next morning. And many a times... You know, when I'm trying something, I can't see it. I go ask my wife, hey, Martha, what do you see here? Well, that looks kind of wrong right there. Oh, yeah, I see that. <laughs> you know, it takes someone else to look at it and see it for you because we get so wrapped up into the tones, the values, the drawing, and we lose that. You know, we lose some of that, uh, some of that ability to, to really see what the, uh, what the painting is, you know. So there's a nice tonal painting of the rose here. Let's now add some more colors back out in through here and get this into more of a painting here. We'll get the and see also I'm gonna increase I'm gonna increase the contrast right up into what I call the focal area and I'll break up some of these lines so they're not quite so precise and perfect here. And pull that down and off here like that. Let's put in just a bit more. This is just kind of the fun I like. You can take anything that you think you messed up on and start turning it into something halfway decent. Here, put a little bit of color. Idea of a little, this is the casual part of it, the idea of a little calyx, but we're going to want the idea of a stem here. There. And sometimes, you know, I got that color that's on there wet. Let me show you something. This is the magic of water. If we're acrylic artists, water is our solvent. It can do blending for us. It can also give us a stem. See? Just water. Because I realize I have a lot of dark there in the water. And I don't need to add white. I just need to remove it, you know. So I can create other little stem movements and stuff like that. So a painting like this is if I just add water and let the water eat through, be the solvent that it is in my painting, and it'll eat through and, and do just that, you know. So it's a great way to do that, you know, to, to do that. So as I come up through here onto this one, there's no, they don't have any rose petals up there, but I'm just gonna gray down a little bit of color here and put on a larger rose pet, uh, leaf here and uh, Touch one in, and then we'll come back and add it just a bit more movement to the rose here. And add maybe a vein line. Sometimes I do the vein lines light, sometimes I do it dark. Sometimes I gray these greens out with some of my colors of my rose, which is pretty here. I love this to take all the dirty colors off of my palette and paint through because that starts to add more, you know, life and stuff like that to the roses and, and carries the colors and does great things, does great things, you know, so 
all kinds of ways here to do that. Maybe a just a lighter little movement. Sometimes I'll just do movement here, and that's all I want. We're, these are practice. These are playing kinds of things for us to see the value. Now, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave a couple of that for right now, and I'm gonna go back and show you. Now that my rose is kind of drying, you can see that the rose could have a bit more life to it, a bit more energy to it. Let's take some of my light, some of my light. Let's come back again. And part of it is going to be tech, uh, textures, paints, slightly different tone. It's going to add so much to your rose, to your painting here. Come back a second or third time or fourth time and just add some of those little tones back in there again. Carry the little tweaks of it here, little colors here. And create some more movements, interest to those petals. Let's, you know, the, the beautiful, beautiful peach color, we can bring that out just a touch more into this rose, I think, into our mid-tones here. You kind of follow the tones that you have in an area, you know, and the values and everything. And then when I come back to add more life, it's like, what I'm doing is actually expressing them a little bit more, a little lighter, a little bit brighter. I just come back and play with it just a little bit more, but you have to be real careful. You still have to be in the ballpark of what you see in that rose, see? So you just carry everything a little heavier. Let's put in a little bit more of this warm, lovely color there, and then we'll come back and lighten that value up. But you can see it changes everything here. Now let's just lighten that value. See, I'm just painting values here and not really a whole bunch of tones. I'm mixing through the colors there. But that, even just painting values like this, now let's gray it down a bit, but even painting values like this can uh, give you a nice look, just a nice rose. Just like that, take a little bit of that someplace else here. It's beautiful little tones as you get in there. But it's a value rose here. Okay, it's a value. You're painting the rose for value here. And see, I like that little bit of green that comes in there, like that. Maybe I want to pick up, let's put a little yellow oxide in that. Slightly different. Pick up this uh, white side up. Whoop, that's a bit bright. Forgot the green. Boy, that'll bite you real quick when you do that, huh? Yeah, that does. Forgot the green in there. Pick that one up. Let's put just a hint of a slightly lighter value right on the edge of the petal. Bring that in. There, like that. That's kind of pretty. And so by working it, you think, okay, well, I messed up the rose. Or you're so far, you know, close to that uh, to that other uh, rose, you know, as far as coloring and stuff. And like I say, not all, not all photos make great paintings. But you're so close to it that uh, it's not as interesting. Coming back like this can add some of that interest. Just coming back and working a little bit more casual your tones can add some of that beautiful interest that, that uh, really pops the rose. Restate your shadows. You know, work your shadows back in there. How do you soften that? A mid-light. Work the light color right in between the two. Drop that in. Let's go back up lighter and pull down. So work your shadow, work your light, work your mid-tone. Pull down, pull down on this here to shape that petal. You know, now that I have that one, a second petal right there, which I eliminated, might look pretty. Just drop that right in there like that with the light edge of your, of your brush, see? It's easy to add it on the second. After you have all the tones in there, just drop the light and pull down and soften this with a little bit of a half tone right in between the two there and that's kind of pretty adds another 
little petal in there. And you can start, you know, once you start to really see it, then you can start building more and more and more. But when you first start out, I want you just to eliminate some petals. Just start to practice. Practice the values. That's the big part. Let's put a little light one right back up in here. Put a little gray red right in there. Once you got all of this going, it's really easy. But you can see right in there, you can... You can really see the rose I'm painting in there, right? You can really see this rose in there. There, like that. So it's really kind of coming in, coming together. Here. Nice pinky. Sometimes slightly different tone. There. Let's put that. Let's go a little bit lighter. Bring those together. I like this this bigger petal here now. It's getting the pinks and the yellows here. A lot of beautiful color. Let's put a deeper red kind of coming out from there. Go back to these pinky yellows. That's kind of pretty in there. So you can see more color working it again. And that's the other thing. A lot of times... It, you know, when you go through and you're first and you're setting your values, and this is very, when you're setting your values like that, it will look a little wrong, it'll look a little off, um, and you may think it looks weak. You know, it looks weak, and we have a tendency, and myself included, like that's why I'm coming back again, myself included, we have a tendency to thin out our colors and to paint really weak when we do something that we're concentrating on the values. That's why it's really great to come back a second time and build everything again. You know, work it again, build it again. And um, because it will give a touch more life to what it is that you have out there. It will give a, a bit more life and, and uh, beauty to it. So don't be afraid to come back out a second or third or even fourth time to... Uh, build some of those colors and build again. See, each time I'm doing this, it's coming a little better and a little better. I totally, in all of that, lost my front pedal here. So I'll drop that in. And we'll drop this one in here. And let's pull down slightly lighter. Pull down to give the impression of that bowl there. There's going, to be, there's going to be a lot of other videos. This is to uh, just help you see the value. You know, and you know, we talked about into the landscape value drawing in. That's what this one is too. I'm going to paint that and draw you into that particular area, you know, of the painting. We want you to come into this particular area. We want you to come right into here. Then that's where we put the darker, cooler, you know, values. That's where we get a lot of this color right back up in here. Like that, that's going to draw you into that area of the rose. How do you soften that? A little bit of yellow and a half tone, a little halfway between. Pull in. Let's put a bit of red into that. Pull that side. A little bit lighter. Pull that side and just push a minute. And boom, we got some nice movement and some nice deeper color in there see but it's and that always always works if your if your values are close enough they don't have to be perfect they have to be close enough see so we'll build this rose a few times each time my tone because I'm freehand painting these tones I'm not mixing anything up so my tones vary and it's that variation that gives you such lovely interest guys it really does. It's hard as a beginner to do that, and that takes time. Now, when if you go out, you can go out and find a simpler rose with just a few petals, or start with rosebuds if you want. You know, they get that nice rounding shape into there. Um, start with those. Start out with something that's really kind of simple, and you know, start those shapes. Look for that center vein line because that tells you the angle. You know, it's like this. It tells you the angle that you, you've got a stroke to get that pedal on there and how it's going to go in there. 
Okay, that center, that center vein line. That's going to tell you. It's going to give you clues as to it. Get a little grayness into areas that are receding. A little grayer tone here. Here, like that. That's pretty. See, it gets just such a pretty tone in there now. And that rose is really starting to come together here. You know, this is where I would take some reds and red violets. And, you know, we do other things. We're going to do other things. I want you to concentrate on value, though, more than anything else right now. But we would put some of those reds and stuff right into our backgrounds here. You'll see me do that with other paintings. You'll see me. And a real good thing with your painting, too, if you get too much, boy, just take some of your original background, you know, here. And this one is almost empty. I take a little bit of your original background color that you have here. And you can use that even just right along with some water. These are all great techniques, acrylic techniques, right along with some water. Come right back up over some of the areas that you thought you might have gotten a little too heavy and push and they will soften. You'll still have a lot of beautiful interest, but they will soften out, which is pretty, you know, to get some of those colors down like that. Maybe even a little darker color. Right back down here. Right like that. That's kind of pretty with that, you know, coming in like that light and dark. And um you know, work these colors. Work the colors. Let's just pull that down. I love the sienna, siennas. You know, I sometimes I'll take these siennas off and go, oh, go put that sienna back on. For years, I never painted with burnt sienna. Now it's just like become my favorite. It's, it's just, it's such a pretty color, pretty tone. And it works so well with many things here. So, you know, let's just drop some of that. I love that kind of look, that imp impressionistic look. Now, so, you know, I've changed the rose up just a bit and everything, but you can see the color-wise and everything there. Yeah, we came pretty darn close there to it. It can it still have some more red in there, believe it or not. A few more other little things, maybe a, another little petal or, or a leaf or so out here, something, and um, that would look out okay. You know, just... But a little more movement or so right out here to take us our eye out. I like to add these things. It's just movement here. And uh, there like that. Just, just kinds of movement here. You can put in blues and light colors, you know. I, I, you know, I put in some of those lights here, a pink, a lighter yellow or something coming in. Would be, uh, you know, beautiful as well coming in to soften some of this look of this, but don't get so wrapped up into the final look of your painting and you're not studying your rose. You're supposed to be studying our rose here. So, but a light green like this would be pretty too. Let's see what a real light color like this, because this color can go beautifully inside the rose too. You know, I like to, it, I like to do things like this and play and try colors and these are where all the looks come from that I eventually end up filming and stuff like that. You know, I like to try things like this and uh, see how things go. You know, it's really a lot of fun. For me, it's really a lot of fun. But I can uh, create, you know, even coming down through here, create like the ideas of movements of stems. Those would be neat up through here. Okay, and ideas of leaves and stems and stuff coming out so you get a different type of uh, look or feeling here. Maybe a darker leaf coming out here. Wipe it back a bit so it's blurry, you know, and uh, yeah, you can really play. And that's what you need to do. Even your beginners, you know, just start playing with it a little bit. You know, it's like I always say to all my students, it's just a bit of paint and a board. Have some fun. You don't, you know, and you're not painting the Mona Lisa or anything like that by any manner of means. What you're doing is practicing. Here you're using a, a, a quick little painting here to practice what we call value. Learning to see the value of the of the rose and stuff here. And it doesn't have to be the world's greatest painting. It's just a quick, quick painting to make you practice or force you to practice values value painting and stuff. That's what we're going to do, right? 
so you can get that in there. You can go through that again and, and do it again, try it again, but uh, that gets you pretty close into that. So running it through, you know, take your pattern. Now you see here when I start playing, I, I really take my pattern off. But see, you can, and I, I really tend to grow my pattern and stuff. And I'm not too bad. I grew a couple of petals. Overall, I'm not too bad on there. This one grew up a bit. You see that? It grew up a little high there. And I added that one in at the wrong angle, but that's okay. But that setting it on the acetate like that when you're first learning, that's a great way. Transfer it down and practice this kind of, it's almost like a blocking in technique of those values, okay? And then you can come in after that and, uh, you know, work your tones and, and everything and get get all your colors, your, your values, your lights and darks, lighter colors, darker colors. These colors have a little bit of green in them and and play your values there. And always remember when if you put on a if you put on a nine and you have a six and you're gonna come somewhere around seven, eight, right in between to soften it down. That's that's how we do it here. So and it works really well. It's really good for you, okay? Alrighty. So um, I will try to push, you know, if you want to use these, you can use any rose uh, paint and pattern and stuff that you have that you want. But what I'll do here, for those of you that want to paint this one, up on the community page of the website, and I'll have it over on our, our website, but up on the community page of the website, you know, where I do surveys, all that kind of stuff, I'll try to po post a picture of the original rose. So you may have to look back through some of the posts up on the community page for uh, for this for this uh, channel, and you'll I'll put that photo up so you guys can look at it and paint it, trace it off. I'll put up the one I use here, and so you can uh, practice that. See, I like all this little movement. I'll just keep talking here and just do little movements, and I start to like it more and more and more when I get all of this little. We used to call it in decorative painting, call it filigree. When I get all of the little filigree gun here and stuff I like it even more okay <laughs> all right so enjoy it come join us over on me we okay so we have a lot this one's coming up in just about a day or two this will I'll post this one up for you too drawing that one in all right and um, then we'll go back paint some value on some casual freehand roses okay but those of you that are start you know I mean when I'm gonna I'm gonna take you through a beginning lesson of a portrait uh, kind of like what I did on that girl back there. Uh, and I'll use that acetate on that for those of you that don't know how to draw. You can still make a nice portrait. And yes, we're going to draw. We're going to learn to draw because drawing is essential. But along the way, you can paint and have some fun and do some nice paintings that you can just take the lines off and then help and then help see, help your eye see where you, some of your problems might be. And so uh, it's a lot of fun, all right? Okay, don't forget to click like down there. Please, please click like and uh, share our channel, help promote our channel with it. We've got a lot more coming, and we would like to have a few more subscribers, okay? All right, thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you on the next one.